Hey everybody, welcome to Shed I Love with my friend uh, Annie DeSalvo. I'm Jason Stewart. I'm really excited that you're here. I've been trying to get you on the show for a while. I know. And you've been really, really busy because you just finished a play. Yes. Tell us the name of the play. Uh, the play was called uh, Knife to the Heart. Knife Through the Heart by Stan Zimmerman. Who did Golden Girls and uh, uh, so many Roseanne. Other, Roseanne and so many wonderful things. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. A one, such a funny, funny writer. Yeah, he is. I mean, he really understands comedy. Comedy, he does. But he also understands pathos at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was so fun to see you on the stage. We Thank met you. probably around 10 years ago at the Screen Actors Guild. Maybe after. even more. Oh, I always pretend it's less. <laughs> No, I thought I mean, it was around 10. Let's say it was around 10, yeah. Yeah, and I just really felt connected to you because, number one, I love talented people, and number two, I love people that are activists, or as I call it, an advocate. Mm -hmm. And you were really, really supportive of uh, making the union a better place. And still, you know, the unions are dying. I mean, we have to be so, so careful. I know. I know. They are dying. And, and um, you know, I uh, was on the board of directors of Screen Actors Club right. for three years, and a uh, national board, and... You know, it was um, it was a time where we really work, were working very hard to um, keep you know, SAG um, strong, and uh, and we're still doing it. We're still trying to do yeah, that. Still trying to do that uh, after the merger, which I was not for, but you know, now that it is, I support actors and whatever. Uh, well, it's actors, it's newscasters, singers, comedians. Mm -hmm. I mean, it it really happened the way the other side wanted to because SAG really did you know, eat up after. I mean, they, after seems to be a bit of a bit gone in terms of any of the uh, old the I, old ways. Doesn't it seem that way or not? I'd rather not comment on, on <laughs> that because I, you know. It's a whole story. It's a whole story. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a very, in those three years when I was on there, I mean, I was, my life was the board. You know, I was be, being called in because I was a, a national officer. So we had, you know, there was a certain, um, camaraderie and uh, power base there and to make decisions and I, I you know I don't want to go into the politics of it no. but um, that, well, it's, that, it's with everything it's what's happening today in the world is the politics are really divided yeah and and you know it's I don't even know it, it's populist you know I, I don't want to you know um, I know I know what you're saying yeah it, it's it's um, the people are getting lost you know, the people are really getting lost. But it is what's happening in the world. And certainly, we just did a TV pilot together last year uh, called The Strivers, which was really about that. Yes, that's right. I forgot <laughs> about that. And you got to play the judge. Have we, have we, uh, is that out yet or ready to go? Or? I've seen pieces of it. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to contact the guy. And yeah. Then, yeah. And Dave look, Castleman came. Yeah. Yeah. Right, he right. lives, he's out here now. Oh, good. That's the uh, writer, producer, director. Mm -hmm. Not writer, direct, writer, producer, not director. Mm -hmm. A guy, Shalom, was a director who I've always wanted to work with. Mm -hmm. So you have this incredible body of work. I don't even know where to start. I'm going to start on Broadway. You actually got to do uh, one of the leading roles in Gemini, the original cast, mm -hmm. which the movie was made with, am I wrong, Rita Moreno mm -hmm. and Madeline Kahn? And Alan Rosenberg. And Alan Rosenberg. Oh, my God, yes, yeah, in the movie. Yeah, he's yeah. been on the show, too. Has he? Yeah, he's yeah. Great Now, guy. who did you play in the, on Broadway? Which part? Um, I played uh, Lucille. Oh wow! And I uh, played it. Uh, we started off off Broadway at Playwrights Horizons. Then we went out to Path Playhouse in Long Island. Then we went to Circle in the Square off Broadway, and then we went to Broadway at the Little Theater. And then I did the actual did the musical version of it thirty years later, which was about ten years ago. I did not know that. Yeah. And on Broadway? Uh, no, it didn't get to Broadway. We uh, did it in Philadelphia as an wow. out of town tryout, and it didn't make it. But still, that's so cool. And yeah, because I was playing someone thirty years my junior, uh, my senior. That thirty years later, they they approached me, Albert and Nerado, the well, writer. You played the same role. I played the same role. Oh my god. <laughs> I played the same role. It was it was really you know this time with song, and they also asked me to play Maria Callas because Maria Callas is very much a part of the play. Uh -huh. um, and they said they wanted me to. I said, "Are you kidding me?" I, I said, "For for me to go on stage and purport to sing like uh, Maria Callas, I said, no way. I'll get tomatoes thrown at me." And they said, oh, come on, no, no, no. I said, listen, go to Juilliard, get an opera singer, let her do it. He says, they said, we tried that in workshop productions, and she couldn't make it funny, and it wasn't, it just didn't go with the show. So they kept bugging me, because they thought it would be very interesting to me, for me to play this, like, very glamorous diva, and then to play this really kind of homely, 
uh, little lady in South Philadelphia. So uh, my agents, so they kept asking me for a tape. W would you send us a tape where you sing? And I, so finally my agent said, get him off your back, send him a tape. So I sent them a tape of me singing Ave Maria. And they called and they said, oh my God, we can't believe you sing like that. You're so perfect. And, you know, going on and on and on. So I did it, you know. And I thought you were going to say, you know, so I sent them a tape of Maria Callas <laughs> singing. So that's what I would have done. And they said, you know, I, I said, well, you got to say somewhere in the script that she's like, you know, lost her voice or, you know. And, um, but then I got nominated for uh, Best Actress in a Musical. Wow. So, you know. Um, you just and, never know. You just never know. And I, you know, I took a risk and I was nervous about it because I, you know, to be, again, I don't know if any actress who would want to, you know, I mean, it's one thing to do, you know, um, master, class. master class. And it's she another thing to yeah. walk around the stage, you know, singing like Maria Callas. So, um, but it was How, great fun. I had a lot of fun. Was that the big, was that the first big thing that you, in your career, what was the first big thing that just sort of put you on the map. Uh, the, the Gemini was That's my... That's what I thought. It was my first professional show, my first equity show. And, um, you know, I won some awards and, um, and uh, I was in the New York Times constantly. I was... I mean, do I sound like I'm bragging here? No, this is great. This I was is... the face of 1977 and, you know, I was like, all this stuff was going on and it all came out of the play. Of course, because that's where people would actually go to theater. Well, that's why in New York, I mean, doing a play can change your career. Doing a play out here, you could be incredible. Nobody sees it because everybody's home watching, you know, what they've TiVo, which is generally, <laughs> generally um, you know, television. Right. That's, so, television is king it, right now. It, it is king. Television and these Marvel movies, but people our age, I don't go to see them. I don't. I can't see a. Film I don't remember the last time I went to a movie. Actually, you know, where I paid for it uh, without going to a screening or something. Uh, but that's still going to the theater. I oh yeah, the theater. The theater has my heart. You did a couple really really big movies when you first started out. So you did first. You did uh, the ordeal of uh, Patty Hearst, which was a big TV movie because that was one of the first. A TV movies before right. uh, Paul Schrader did his film, and then you did Starting Over, that Jim Brooks wrote that yeah. with uh, Burt Reynolds, the late Jill Clayburgh, who was nominated, and Candace Bergen, whose career mm -hmm. completely changed. I don't know, you played a wife, somebody's wife in that, but I don't know if it was a big uh, deal, but still, it was a big deal to do those things. Yeah, it was. I mean, to she, be because when you were in those movies, people went, "Oh my God," because that's when people went to the movies. Yeah, and you know, I, I you know started working with Jim Brooks a lot after that. I did Taxi and. Um, cheers and was he in Bobby Cheers? Yeah, uh, no, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, not, I'm sure. not sure, but I just worked with Jim. I uh, started working with him in a few things. It's hard to remember. Uh, and um, but uh, who I, I'm a great admirer of his because he's so super talented. But you know, I, was, I would say things like Stardust Memory with Woody Allen. I was going to say that was a really big deal for you. That was the, it. Was that the thing? I mean, but the thing that I remember, the thing that really did it for you and you tell me who right was Arthur yes you played the prostitute right and you were just we probably couldn't be further from who you are <laughs> right because right. you're so you know you're so put together this woman was just when I because that's the first thing I ever saw you the thing that mm -hmm. I remembered mm -hmm. and then I went I remember when I was a kid seeing you in this stuff and then I went back over mm -hmm. uh to see other things that you were in and I sort of remembered you coming around I went oh wow this gal is uh really really making a uh a dent in everything. And you went from that film, from Arthur, to doing um, another film with Jill Clayburgh, I'm Dancing As Fast As You Can. Yeah, with Joe Pesci, yeah. What? We played, uh, we both played in, in, inmates in an in insane asylum. <laughs> it was so fun, um, you know. What was he like? This is this is before, right, this is right after um, uh, oh, what's Raging his name? Bull. Right? It was after Raging Bull. But had Raging Bull been released when you did yeah, it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, um, and uh, he, uh, I'm just trying to think. We, we just had fun. I mean, I is that all my, I don't, I don't even remember. I, well, when I go to write, me, I'm going to go look and you tell me what you think. You know, what, my favorite year. Right, we're going to go to that, but I want to hear about uh, Arthur, though. What was it like to work with a brilliant Dudley Moore? He Ooh. was so lovely. And he was so in love with uh, the big tall girl at that time. Susan Anton. Susan Anton, right. And they were always on the set. And you know, she was on the set and he would put his arm, you know, uh, she would put her arm on his shoulder. I mean, it was, it was like his arm on her thigh. You know, that's oh, all my could reach. God. And, he was um, a little guy. But he was lovely. And uh, I remember s sitting in the back of the limousine with him in the, um, 
in the limousines, it seems. And, um, and he said, you know, this really used to be, I was so in love with New York. I, you know, this was 1979. And, um, and he said, um, I was, this used to be my town. He said, now Los Angeles is my town. And this sounded like anathema to me. <laughs> I mean, how could somebody be in love with Los Angeles and, and lose their love for New York? Because I was so loved New York. I was from Philadelphia, but I had such a love affair with Manhattan. I mean, who, who doesn't? And, um, well, you were there when it was really happening. Oh, yeah. You were there during the 70s and 80s. Yeah, when they, That was exactly. just the time. It was the time. It and was you the did, time. And you got to work with all these incredible people. Um, so, Arthur, what was it like when Arthur came out? Because then you, all of a sudden you're known in a much bigger way than you'd ever been known before, right? Well, yeah. It's such and, a big hit movie. And it was such a big hit movie. And, you know, was, he was nominated for an Oscar. And you had a major supporting role. I know. And um, and, and with, oh, every time they show that on the Academy Awards, Arthur, or they show it, you know, in museums, I always have to sign a release because they always show the scene between him and him and me. Which and scene? The, the beginning. Of, of, remind us. Of, remind so the fans. I'm standing on the corner of New York. We shot it at 3 o'clock in the morning. And um, me and another hooker, um, and uh, <laughs> and he comes along with his limousine. And he said, "Was were the more attractive of you? Please, please step forward." <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I step forward, of course. And um, was that planned or? Oh no, that was the, that was the line. Right. But I, I'll tell you something. I was very. Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, the costume designer, uh, Jane Greenberg, who was so renowned. Because um, you wore spandex pants. Well, wait a minute. Right? I, first, first we had gone shopping, and I, and I was wearing a dress that was slit all the way up the side and was low cut. And then she said to me, would you come with me one night? I said, okay. So we, we drove around Man Lower Manhattan, and we were looking at prostitutes. <laughs> and, um, you know, a lot of them were wearing the spandex pants. So um, little did I know, I come in for you know the for the shoot, and she says to me, and she had a pair of red spandex pants, and she, and and I and she said, um, you know, what do you think of these? And I said, oh no, I couldn't wear those. I said, you know, you, you can you can see a, a goosebump on with those, you know, <laughs> you know. So um, I said, I I, I said I, I was. <coughs> excuse excuse me. me. I was so shy. I said, oh, I couldn't wear those in front of the crew. And so, <laughs> just in the film. <laughs> so the so the other girl, the other prostitute, said, pr prostitute said she, she had one line. She said, "Well, if you're not going to wear them, I'm going to wear them." I said, "You know what? I think I'll try this." One. <laughs> <laughs> and they really, really. And I wish I had saved them because those pants, those you know, at that time, you know, it was before Greece and everything, when everybody was wearing those super tight Peg satiny pants. pants. And um, I wish I had kept them, you know, uh, because I still have the compact that I that they gave me for that um, to wear as the prostitute. It lit up when you opened it. I mean, but, you did literally that year. You did in '82. You did '81. I think you did. Oh my God! You did Arthur, and then in '82 you did one, two, three, four, four uh, TV show and four films. You did Gemini, I guess, as a pilot or as a. Um. They. Uh, they uh, shot it for um, Showtime. Oh, okay. Uh, but Danny Aiello and I were the only two that they they uh, they kept. Wow, that um, must have been weird. It was weird to to kind of felt like you were abandoning the rest of the cast. But you have no choice. Yeah, it was, the they choice. wanted television names. They got Scott. Bio. Who was in the original? Who was in the original? The original was um, Reed Burney, who has came, won the Tony for Humans two years ago. Oh wow! Um, and he was like twenty one or something, and. Uh, Bob Picardo, who still is a very, very close Star friend. Star Trek, right? Huh? Star Trek. Right for Star Trek. Yeah, but we, we, we've worked together about eight times. Yeah. We, either, we either play, uh, we play a lot of husband and wife. Um, and then, um, who else? Jessica James, who stayed with the play for the entire run of five years on Broadway. Wow. Five years doing that role. Uh, who else? How long did you do it? I was the first to leave because I did working, um, the musical working. Uh, an out-of-town Broadway tryout in Chicago. But my favorite year was really, I mean, did you hesitate? That was Richard Benjamin's first movie. Right. It was about your show of shows, basically. Exactly. The late Joe Bologna. Right. Um, such brilliant, brilliant people. In yeah. It. And who knew that it was going to... Who knew? Peter O'Toole. What was it like? I oh mean, share God. a moment. Well, um, one of the things I learned in watching him was when we had the table read, 
uh, he had the old script and the new and the revised script. And he sat with both of them and he said, you know, why did we take out this line? Why did we take out this bit? This needs to go back in. And he, he, you know, he was the star and he was so, so talented. And so he sat with the two scripts and, wow. and I thought that was so, that really made me sit up and listen and remember that for myself. And he was just, um, you know, a mensch. And, um, and it's probably one of the most memorable, brilliant performances by anybody. Oh, by, I mean, in film. That was, scene, do you remember the scene when he got a tear in his eye when he went to go, he was in the car and he saw his daughter coming home from school or riding course, a bike? Yeah. Uh, it's just so brilliant because he had that, that uh, the humor, you know, I'm not an actor, I'm a movie star. Right. <laughs> and then Mark Lane Baker made him a star. Then he went on to do Perfect Strangers mm -hmm. and then more Broadway, tons mm -hmm. of more Broadway. Mm -hmm. And Lainey Kazan made her a star, finally. Oh, Lainey was so hilarious in that scene. So hilarious. And so many wonderful character actors. And you didn't speak in the movie, your character, right? No, I, no, the, the other character didn't speak. He would whisper in my ear and then I would... You would talk, oh. I'd talk to Bill Mason. Right, that was, um, Hoff, uh, oh God, what was his name? Hoffman, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I just saw his Barrett, name. Barrett, no. He was also an ordinary people, and his name was Basil Hoffman. Basil. He's a wonderful, wonderful character yeah, actor. Right. And that film was even just as successful as uh, Arthur. I know. I mean, you. It was. A, it's Time Magazine's top third, top one of uh, thirteen favorite films of all time. I think it is with everybody from that generation. And you know what? That writer never wrote anything else, uh, or and and Dick Benjamin never had another. Well, no, that's not, he had a couple. He had a couple. Hits? Yeah, he did. Things that you, you, you'd be surprised. And he was a delight to work with, and so was the writer. I mean, uh, Palumbo, uh, you know, they were all great. It was great experiences. I mean, I didn't realize I was being thrown in. For me, it was just like I was just working, and then everybody says, you're going from this room to this room to this room. You didn't really realize I it. I didn't realize it. I just thought, oh, well, I've got another job. And But there was a, a time in my career where... I was being offered. I didn't even have to read. And, you know, do I? so my agent would not. I said, do you want to do a TV movie now, a play or a feature? Ah, uh, let's do, let's do a TV movie now. You know, I mean, it's sort of like, and I thought that that would go on forever. It changes. It Th does change. It does change. You think it's, you think it's age or do you think it's the availability part for women? I think there certainly is those two elements I really do. And, and you also have this moment, and unless you know how to keep it going, you have to keep reinventing yourself yeah. mm -hmm. constantly, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think you have done. Well, I have done. I've gotten into writing and directing. I had a film with the Beverly Connection, you know, uh, that I wrote and directed, uh, The Amati Girls. Right. And I wrote uh, my first uh, directing um, a fee, a fee, a, a attempt <laughs> uh, event was um, I wrote a short called Women Without Implants. In, oh yes! In 1984, and uh, it uh, I shot it in my house. I called up my friends, Kathy Moriarty, uh, Kathy Najimi, uh, Julie Haggerty, and I said, "Do you want to be in my film movie?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people don't realize that when you ask people to do things with you, they do it because they they love you and they yeah. love your work, and they know they're going to come to play. And then other people try to do things with us, and they'll say, "Hey, I, we don't really need you to do this." And then they'll realize that nobody will come along because the reason they're coming is because they want to play with you. Exactly. Well, I had done the lead, and Kathy did. Uh, Moriarty had. Um, Kathy Moriarty from Raging Bull. Yes, yeah, she. She had produced the a kindergarten short. cop and yeah and she had so 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 she had produced the film she asked me to play it so then i called her she said absolutely and uh you just know, to shout out to her she's in patty cakes now I which heard. is and she's so good in it she's so such good. a good actress yeah um and um you know uh played in festivals all over the world you know that was playing in australia europe i mean i i only went but it, but it was picked up at, at the hampton film festival by Lifetime Television, and they and they aired it. So that's where I saw it. That's where you saw it. Yeah, it was the Women's Film Festival. Yes, yes. And uh, and I was nominated for Cable Ace Award as Best Actress, and you know I produced, wrote it, directed it, starred in it. So and it was a harder time for women directors. Then. And it was, it was, and now you know, um, I don't know.
know, you think it's gotten way better for oh, female the last, directors? I think in the last year or two, you know, this 50-50 thing that they're having, you know, only 50% of the directors on a TV show have to be a woman. Ryan Murphy started this idea. Now 50% of the directors on these shows. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it started around two years ago. I had no idea that was going on. It's really exciting. Wow. And it, just another shout out to Richard Benjamin. He did two of my other favorite movies, Please so do. you have forgotten. Racing with the Moon. With Sean Penn and Nicolas Cage and Elizabeth McGovern, love that movie. I haven't seen it. And probably one of you, TV's favorite movies is one of Cher's last leading roles with Mermaids, which plays all the time on television. Cher and Winona Ryder. It was a television movie. No, it was a theater movie, but it plays on. It's one of those movies that's on TV all the time. But it was a very big, successful oh. film. Dick Benjamin, such a gentleman, very nice and talented yeah, but, and sweet. Now tell me. Um, as the years went on for you, you still you work with Whoopi Goldberg on Burglar, which people don't know, but her part in Burglar was supposed to be a man. It was supposed to be Bruce Willis and someone else, and they changed that. That's what I heard. Well, you know, they they I'll tell you a story. I don't know if John Goodman knows this, uh, but we played uh, cops together. We played partners, and in Burglar, uh, in Burglar, and uh, and the the guy who drove the car. Well, had a, had a, a more substantial role than than the person who sat next to the cop, and so I went in for the sidekick, and I said to them, you know, I said, well, wouldn't it be funnier if you had this small woman bossing around a big big guy like John Goodman? I said, don't you think that that uh, that would make it much funnier? more interesting film? Much more interesting, funnier. This is nineteen eighty. It was right after uh, Color Purple, so it was like, I think Burglar was uh, 87. So this is not, yeah, this is probably, yeah. Two years after the Color Purple, so she was a big, big star. At that and time and so, so, the, so the guy went, so the director went, you know what, that is funnier. <laughs> and so he gave me the other part. Wow. And it, whenever I, you know, I haven't seen it in years, but it is funny that you have this really big guy. John Goodman is so talented. I mean, I, I remember seeing him on the stage, and, and then you have me. You know, telling him what to do, which was funnier than having this big guy telling me what to do, which is what you would think. Right. It was sort of the beginning of women sort of taking their own. Yeah. And then you work with Travolta in Perfect, right? Oh, yeah. I had a great time on that movie. That we all thought was going to be such a big hit. Oh, my God. Yeah. So much PR about it. But I'm, I'm, these days, it probably would have been a big hit. But everybody had such incredible you know, high I, expectations. I'll tell you what happened with that film. Um, you know, they, um, when you, critics see themselves as journalists and they portray journalists as being a little crooked in, in the film, m more than a little. Oh. And so the critics really went after it. I mean, I couldn't believe to the point where, you know, John and Jamie did not want to go to Europe to do any publicity. Jamie board. Lee Curtis. And I was billed third. So they said to me, do you want to go? I said, sure. you kidding? I'll go. Paris, London, and the Taormina Film Festival in Sicily. And so it was a great time for me. But um, it, that movie was not well received. Um, it was James Bridges, who was just a... Oh, James Bridges was one of my favorite directors. Just an absolute peach, a sweetheart of a guy. Relaxed, fun. And, you know, I, I often tell my... Urban Cowboy was his big hit. Well, and Black Widow. This this film had just come off of Urban Cowboy. They took the same producer, same writer, same cinematographer, Gordon Willis, who won the Lifetime Achievement Award. Woody Allen used him quite a bit, right? Oh, yeah. When I, I did work with him, too, on Stardust Memories um, with Woody. Um, but uh, And then, anyway, so they, like, Xerox, the entire team, thinking, well, if Urban Cowboy did that well... Let's stay with that same element, same star, John Travolta, same scream, everything. And it, and, uh, it didn't happen because... Uh, I still think it was a fun movie and I still liked it. I mean, it's so reminiscent of the... Of, the, you of know, that period. Of that period of time. And this is when you really went into major doing television. I mean, major shows. Recurring on Wise Guy, that was with... Um, oh, what Ray Sharkey. Yeah, oh, God, the late Ray Sharkey. No, not Ray Sharkey. No, he, Ray. Was, he was on that, if I remember. Oh, no, correctly. I did a series with Ray Sharkey. No, this was with that other guy. 
Well, uh, was it? Um, Did you replace the gray sharpie? Or the gray sharpie replaced him. I think. Ken Wall. Ken Wall. Ken Wall. Lovely what? guy. Jonathan Banks. He was an old boyfriend of mine. Oh, was he? Yeah. Really? Yeah, we did. Uh, he was on the Patty Hearst. But Ray Shockery was on that. He did ten episodes. Uh, yeah, he did. It was a bit of a comeback from him. Yeah, I think you know, so. He had a drug problem. God mm -hmm. bless him. Mm -hmm. Kevin Spacey was also on that show. Yeah. You know, during the day before he became an Oscar winner, and now, whatever he is now. Uh, <laughs> Have you heard anything about uh, how he's doing? No, yeah. I don't know him, but uh, uh, he's a friend of mine. But I, I mean, I, I mean, I'm, I've known him for such a long, long time. Well, but this whole Me Too thing, it's, but with, you know, it's just terrible, and I'm so glad that it's happening. But I think that his, and not to make excuses for anybody's bad behavior, or but his is really alcohol related. I mean, quite a bit of that. That's what I've heard from people, certainly for years and years and years. But nonetheless, you got to work on the Tracy Ullman show again with Jim Brooks. Yes. And I'm so jealous that that show must have been exciting to work on. Yeah, she's a real talent. And you got you did you did two or three episodes, mm -hmm. and went to do so much, so much uh, television from L.A. Law to Dream On to Thirty Something, Cheers, Doogie Howser. There wasn't a popular show that you weren't on. I mean. What was it like to be in that position? Then you did a show called The Man in the Family where you were the lead. Mm -hmm. That was with Ray Shark. That was the one with Ray Shark. Yeah, we were brother and sister. Oh, wow. You guys were close friends, I could tell by your face. Um, well, I, didn't, yeah, I didn't know him very well. Uh, something across, he, I saw actually, something go across your face. Uh, you know who, who did it originally? Dice Clay. We did a pilot with Dice Andrew Dice Clay first. And then that got canned, and then Ray came in. I worked with him once on uh, Dice on Entourage. He's a character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's just a definite, definite. And you, Leah Remy was in that show with you. Yes, yeah, she played my younger sister. She was 19, I think, at the time, or 20. What was it about her that people were just crazy about? Because she was like so big in television. She talked about doing tons and tons of pilots. I mean, just one of those people. I always wonder what that is. Is that one person that they're always picking to do pilots? There's a mm. certain thing about them, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. there's people like, you really came from Broadway and movies, mm -hmm. and that's what brought you to television. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you necessarily would have gone to television in those days. Well, you know, I've often thought, what would have been like had I stayed in New York? You know, because like now my friend Ray Sharkey, who couldn't, I mean Ray Sharkey, uh, Reed Burney, who couldn't uh -huh. get arrested in New York for years, um, is now the toast of Broadway. You know, right. he, won the, he won the Tony, and he's doing a lot, a lot of stage. He's and the one that got on that incredible uh, Tony speech, right? Yes. About how he wanted to quit the business. Yes, so many times. Oh, my God. I mean, I heard him over the years because we've remained friends all these years. And he would say, oh, you know, I don't know what it is. And I can't get arrested. He was like, had angst about it, you know. Of well, course. It's hard. Who wants to be, you know, over 40 or 50 years old and not be able to make a living? Exactly. It's terrible. It, yeah. You have to figure things out. Now, you have done everything. I mean, that's why you started directing. You also teach. I write. You write. I wrote a TED Talk, actually. Uh, I, well, I, I wrote a feature. I wrote the short. And then I wrote a one-person show about Anna Magnani uh, that I did at the Mentor Project at the Cherry Lane Theater in New York about six years ago. Wow. Uh, but, you know, I'm, I wrote a TED Talk. So you have gone back to New York. Yeah, here and there, you know. Um, How was it received? The, uh, the, uh, uh, it was received well, and um, but you know, I I'm getting more into writing. I, I mean, I don't want to. I mean, I still work. I just finished that play, and you know, uh, doing a lot of pilot. Well, everybody everybody does everything now. You do everything, and that's very years true. ago. Yeah. You know, when you were doing Broadway, you would do movies, but then you you told me the other day when we were working on the Strivers when we were on the set, you said, you know, I wouldn't do television in those days. I just didn't, no, I'm not that interested in TV. I want to do film and theater. And that's the way people were. And you, I know. Well, I was, all, I mean, they, were, they wanted me to do Cheers, you know, the Rhea Perlman role. And, and they were the second Saturday Night Live, you know, I, I turned that, you know, they were interested. I mean, there was, it was sort of like, no, I was very elitist. And I was so afraid of getting typecast. Because well, my people friends, were in those days. Well, I mean, Penny Marshall and Cindy Williams were good friends of mine, and they said to me, "Don't do it. You'll you'll never work, work in anything." And to me, that was a nightmare. Right. To, to, so I I wanted Rhea to the say, same way. It was very hard for her to get any other roles other than playing a wisecracking dame. Who? Aria Perlman. Aria Perlman. Yeah. yeah I know, I know. And she's a wonderful actress. Yeah. 
So, um, but you know, this, this TED talk that I wrote, uh, two weeks before we were supposed to shoot it, um, I got a, a, an email canceling it. And it was, it was about, it was called blending feminism and the feminine in the 21st century. And it was about the, yes, the importance of, um, of course, the feminist movement, but also remaining feminine as a woman. And, and it was actually, uh, uh, uh projecting a, um, uh, uh, I know this is probably going to sound politically incorrect, but if you if you were to have heard the um, the speech, the you would have have known that uh, what it was doing was acknowledging the differences between men and women, rather than new. There are some people that believe in that in that in that uh, uh, adage. I mean, there really are people that do believe that, and but there are also women that don't want that. And want to be look at you look at Frances McDormand. I mean, she just wants to be whoever she is, whether she's wearing a dress that makes her look like an Amish woman, where she doesn't wear any makeup on an award know, show. To, to you know, and I think I think there's room for everyone mm -hmm. to be whoever you want. I mean, in my day, we'd see a woman like that, we just assume she was a lesbian, and mm -hmm. now no, not at all. She's married and has a, a son. And has been with the same man for a million years, and, and obviously loves her husband mm -hmm. dearly. I know. As she, you know, so it's it's. Has she spoken out on that? I mean, have people asked her like, why do you go to award ceremonies and you don't doll up? I mean, uh, has that come up? There was a whole New York Times article about her. Really? And it, you should read it. It's really wonderful. I will look and it, it talks up. about her just wanting to be who she is. You know, because she was a bit of a glamour girl in her day too. You know, and she just wants to be whoever she is, and that's who she is now. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I think she doesn't like the idea of women being sexualized in films so much. And that's her plight. And whereas you were speaking about you want to keep your look, you've always, you've kept your figure, you've kept you always even now today you have a look, an outfit, you, you have your makeup, your hair, mm -hmm. you're who you are. You oh, know? I, I really enjoy my femininity and I I'm not just talking about makeup and hair and clothing. I'm I'm talking about um the beauty of um, being female and of uh, a vulnerability that uh, when I'm next to a man, I, I feel even more strongly uh, about, and I enjoy that. And you know, somebody says, "Oh, you know, oh, you know, you're you're pandering to." No, I'm not pandering. I'm pandering to nature. If I'm pandering, but to this anything. is also who you are. You're a woman of a different generation, also, where that meant something. Yes, but I mean, so I, I mean I'm left. I, you know, uh, but uh, the hard, 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 hard left, left of left, where everything is like social construct. I don't believe in. I don't believe that. I believe that men and women are different. Uh, equal, yes, they but should rightfully. All, they should rightfully. Th they are equal, but, but different. It's not, you know, saying men and women are equal, but not the same. But look, what, look what's going on now. There's, there's, a, there's a, and I say a woman just to uh, make a point. There's a woman named uh, um, um, Dylan Kate Taylor, I think. And she is not a she. She is physically a she. But she, uh, she, see, I can't even do it. She, this person wants to be called this person and not a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. And that is this person's uh, choice in life. And that's who they believe they are. Mm -hmm. And when I was a kid, if you'd say they or who, or all, it was rude. You know, I, was, I wasn't brought up like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, I, even now I'm having a hard time just sort of finding the adjectives mm -hmm. to, dis to describe this person. And that's what's happening today. Or Frances McDormand, who chooses, is in a long time relationship, a very strong woman, who has a double Oscar winner or an Emmy winner being able to play these incredible characters that you and I would kill the first person on the street to play. Mm -hmm. And she's had this incredible career. But I think she should be allowed to be herself yeah. and you should be allowed to be yourself. Right. And that it's okay, you know. But, uh, but you know, it, uh, it was canceled because they said it was too controversial. Uh, this is last April, not this past April, the April before. And it came three months after. Your the, TED Talk? No, that's when my TED Talk was canceled. And, right. But um, it came three months after the March on Washington. They said, oh, now with the March on Washington, uh, you know, it's it's too controversial. I said, wait a minute. I was at the March on Washington. I'm an activist. I'm an advocate, you know. I mean, uh, but that doesn't take away the fact that I believe in gender. I do believe in gender. I mean, I think that there's lots of cross-gender and there's lots of nuances, 
but I do believe that men and women are are different. And uh, you know, and I actually quote an anthropologist who's done studies of love all over the world, and she said, "I just don't understand why people are trying to to push this thing where men and women are the same." She said, "We're finding more and more differences in the brains between men and women." And she said, "Obviously, these people have not had male a male and female child, because if you've had a male and female child, you see the differences." Um, but does it matter? You know. And, it doesn't matter, and, but the, the but all the the male bashing that was going on. But now after 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 uh, you know the Me Too movement, it's like oh, it's, it's even, getting quite it's, complicated. It's even it's even getting more controversial. So I'm going to write. I'm writing a book about it. I've I've been uh, written an outline, and a book is something I haven't done yet. Uh, so I think I'm going to try that. What's interesting about your roles is as you've gotten older and changed, as you play lately, you've played a couple of judges, a lot of moms. I played a lot of lawyers. If there's one thing I've played about a bajillion of, it's lawyers. And now I'm moving to judges. <laughs> judges. Well, Monk, The Closer, Entourage, Sex in the City, Two Broke Girls, See Dad Run. I mean, you still have this incredible body of work that I think you should be so proud of, Felicity, which I loved, and the idea that you I direct. Played two, you know, I played two different roles on Felicity. Usually they never do that. They never invite how, me to How did they let you come back? I don't know. And I told my agent, I said, you know, maybe you should tell them that I was on there as another role. He said, I told them. <laughs> they didn't care. They didn't care. But, you well, know. Lucy used to do that all the time on Musa Ball. On her show, she'd have her group of you know friends that she liked, and they'd come back. And play a role every couple of years, you know, mm -hmm. and they, she'd have the same person. I love that. You also got to play Phyllis in Boys Life 3, which was uh, uh, that short film that I think, am I right? Is it the one that Jason Gould directed or no? Oh, yeah. My God, I forgot to say, they changed the titles. Well, because there was three short. it's three shorts. I don't know what the name of yours was. Uh, uh, J J uh, Jason Gould? The one you directed, uh, or you were you in the others? There was there were several different. No, I never directed that. Oh, you didn't direct it. You were in it. Is this Jason called Barbara Streisand? Yeah, he directed one of the segments in uh, uh, oh, Boys Life Three, but you did one of the. I never saw the movie. You, you you did one of the shorts. I'm not sure which one you did, and I thought I'm that. I'm not sure which one. Oh, it had to do with Scientology. Yes, think, yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, I mean, played so, a, a lawyer. Did I play? Yes, I think you were a lawyer in that. That was a lawyer. I mean, I, what I love is, and also being in Radio Murders, which was oh, sort of an homage to your character in the other movie. Yes, it was. What was you? Yeah, you really I did, did my homework. research. You did your homework. Yeah. I mean, right now, what would you really want to do? Oh, I would love Actor, to. I would love to be a, 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 a. I would love to be a regular on a fabulous television series with happy people. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I really make sure I say that because I've worked on like when I worked on Cheers and Taxi, you know, I mean it was so much fun. Everybody was happy, and then I worked on other series. Well, I will not ma mention um, where people were not happy, and um, and that's a hard thing to walk into every day. Oh yeah. Uh, so it's not always like that. When I worked on Birth of a Nation, it was such an incredible experience. And then you go on other things. It's not just being happy. It's people really caring about the work. Caring about the work, but also being happy within themselves. Because if you're not happy within yourself, everything is, has to do with the relationship with the self. Then you then you wind up going in and spreading your irritability or your unhappiness or your discontent. And, you know, the fish stinks from the head. It's either set by the director. You're so Italian. <laughs> the fish stinks from the head, right, darling? <laughs> No, actually, I, I picked that up in show business. Somebody told me that. It's an old Italian thing. Is it? Is yeah, it it's, it's, an old, it's an old gangster thing, yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, but it's either the director or the star that sets the tone. Oh, I think so. Yeah. And, Definitely. And, you know, if the, if the star has more power than the director, then he sets the tone. What was one of you, who was one of the best experiences you had working John with? John Travolta in, in Perfect. Yeah. And Jim Bridges. I mean, Jim Bridges was definitely a very positive guy. He was, you know, in, in charge, passed lovely, way too happy. I uh, passed away too young. Yeah. And John was fabulous to work with. John took care of his cast. You know, well, he loves the work. He's, he he's coming out in Gotti, and you can see my he friend just, wrote it. Yeah, really? Yeah, Leo Rossi. I'm surprised you're not in it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. I, you know, he was from Philadelphia. I said. Why don't you? Think? I have to go see it because uh, uh, we should. I, w I would love to. Yeah, because uh, I'm going to run to see it because I can't wait to see him in a leading role in a movie again. Yeah, what's 
I don't know. I said, <coughs> bless you. Oh, sorry. my allergies are still going. That's right. No, the film had got bought by Lionsgate, and they didn't want to give it a full release or something. And oh, really? John bought it back, and they, now it's getting a full release. Yeah, I talked to Leo a couple of weeks ago, and uh, he said, I said, are you having any screenings here? You know, he said, no, we're not. We're doing it. Uh, the, we're doing the big thing in New York and New Jersey. That's where they're doing it. The, the, oh, certainly why? Because that's where Gotti's yeah, from. Yeah, exactly. And that's where his family's from. And they're doing a big deal over there. And that's where all the money's being spent. I said, you But know, it's I'm coming out nationally uh, in June. Uh, I think June. I think this weekend. Really? Or the next weekend, yeah. Maybe you'll go to the theater and pay to see a movie with me? <laughs> yeah, maybe. It's a friend. Well, this has been an absolute joy, I have to tell you. I've been wanting to have you on the show for the longest time. Thank when you, you. You know, when you came over to me and said, I just got back from doing Doubt, I thought, God, I just love this woman. Because I just love the idea of somebody always wanting to work on their craft and always be better. And I think that's who you are. You're a true artist. Thank you. You know, Thank and you. that's that's why, I mean, I actually, that's why I recommended you for that part. I said, you know, no, we're not reading her. You're just going to offer it to oh, her. Oh, that's beautiful. Because I don't think, I really believe that the people should, you know, watch somebody's work. Do some due diligence. Yeah. You know, yeah, they don't do that too much anymore. Unless it's something that you've never done before. And you want to prove that you can do something different. If people want to find you in social media, how do they find you? Um, you Facebook. Have... Facebook, okay. Uh, and, uh, and my website, www.andesello.com. Okay. Uh, I know that, that I have to I have to get up with the Twitter and all that. I, uh... Well, it's now Insta Instagram and everything. That's the big deal. Is that, is that the new one? You've been, Twitter just passed you over, my dear. <laughs> Instagram is, is the hot new thing. It, it is, but Facebook. You know, I, I think for, I belong uh, to Instagram. I joined it, but I never, same as I joined Twitter, but I never do anything with okay, it. Okay, we'll put it on your website so people can tweet you. Do you really think it makes that much of a difference? I think so, yeah. Well, you know, my friend, Stan Zimmerman, you know, the writer yes. of the play, he, 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 he tweets he, and he, he, he does all of it. And yeah. he tweeted uh, about Roseanne and CNN saw it, called him in, sent him a limo, and he did an interview for CNN from a well, tweet. And I thought, wow. Well, I, I, people, you know, people look at Instagram and find you. You can actually talk to people on Instagram without Twitter. You have to be, uh, they have to follow you, and you have to follow them. But Instagram is that way. Look, we're having a little lesson here, right on uh, "Should I Love" with Jason Stewart. And, and you're the best, and you're always so creative and always thinking outside the box for yourself. I that's because I terrific, I, and you're uh, you you know people don't realize you know the skill that you have as an actor. Uh -huh. And um, so maybe this uh, people will be listening and put you in something. And same with you. Maybe we could play something together. Yeah, it would be fun. Absolutely. So go to AnnieDeSalvo.com or find her on Facebook. Uh, thank you so much. If thank you forget you. her name, you forget anything, just go to JasonStewart.com, S-T-U-A-R-T, and I will turn you on to her. Everybody uh, take care until next time. Bye-bye.